much more of a pitch to contact guy. When you have your defense playing behind you the way they were right from the get-go today, how much more confidence does that give you just to, to fill up the zone and, and let the guys put the balls in play? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, our defense has been spectacular all year. Uh, we're making big plays, uh, especially the outfield, man. Uh, a pitcher could always appreciate them laying out, running to walls and diving for for, uh, for balls for us. Um, it was huge. And, you know, I'd like to pitch contact. And when we got the offense did a good job getting runs early and we just kept putting it on. So it was easy for me to go out there and just try to get quick outs. At one point today, you retired 11 in a row. When you're in the zone like that, what, what does that feel like on the mound? Is I mean, do, do you sense kind of the momentum going at that point? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, when we score runs, my job is to go out there and, and uh, put up a shutdown inning. Uh, and to get a shutdown inning, you just got to attack the zone, fill up the zone, and just make them put the ball in play. Uh, when we get a good cushion, uh, there's no reason to, to pick around and try to strike out everyone and, you know, nibble the corners. It's just go right after them. Once again, members of the media, your next question comes from Mike Muma. Hey, Taiwan. Uh, I mean, you're a guy who hung around on the free agent market till late in the offseason here. I mean, the way you, you pitch, do you, you feel like uh, you kind of proven some people wrong that maybe had some doubts about you? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I know what I did last year. I know this is my second year coming off from Tommy John. Uh, I feel confident in myself. I felt confident last year. Uh, I showed that I had, I had a couple more pitches. And, you know, this year I just – you know, my only focus is go out there and, and try to help the team win ball games. Try to go deep in the games, and um, you know that's all I'm doing. I don't care if I'm you know make, proving people wrong or not. Um, I know what I can do, and you know the Mets believe in me, and they know what I can do too. Thank you. You should so sorry. Your line is open. Hey Taiwan, is this the best that you felt uh, since your Tommy John surgery? Yeah, you know I had a good little stretch last year. I felt good, but this year um, I think I'm just you know just feeling healthy again. Feeling confident in, in all my pitches. You know, I had my a real spring training uh, this year, and, you know, I was able to prepare and get ready uh, normally. And so I just feel good right now. Next question is from Anthony DeComo. Hey, Taiwan. Uh, obviously, because of the surgery, it's been four years since you've really logged a significant workload in the big leagues. Uh, how much do you think you can continue to kind of, uh, you know, Pitch deep into games and really log this as we get deeper into the summer, get into August, September. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is just taking care of my body, uh, making sure I, I'm in the gym every day and, and in the training room, just staying healthy and uh, really keeping up on my, my arm care, um, listening to my body when I need to. And, uh, you know, we you know, we have some off days, you know, so we get the extra day and stuff, but it's just really being smart out there, not trying to push through it. Is your expectation that you can just have a normal starters workload this season? Yeah, I mean, I feel good. You know, I had a really good offseason, uh, trained really hard. I felt good with that, and the spring training and everything felt good. Um, I've, you know, again, I've been preparing really well. Uh, I've been taking care of myself in between starts, so uh, I feel confident I can pitch all year. Thank you. Thanks. Your next question is from Gary Beach. Hey, Taiwan. What's, uh, what's this homestand done for you guys confidence-wise? A couple, you know, dramatic walk-off wins. You went 5-0, and obviously. You won seven straight. Uh, what's this last week or so done for you guys in the clubhouse? Um, I think we're just consistently playing baseball now. You know, we our first month, you know, first couple of weeks, we kind of just we're all out of sync because, you know, we had a couple of things go wrong, rain delays and uh, rain outs and stuff. But now we're starting to play uh, normal baseball. Um, and I think we're finally starting to click. You know, we know that we're a good team. We know we can go out there and win ball games, And uh, we're starting to, to, to show that right now. I want thank you very much for your time. Thank you, guys. Good afternoon, Luis. Your first question today comes from Steve Gelbs. Hey, Luis, what has impressed you the most about the way that this team has played defense recently? Well, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that the guys have done their routine uh, consistently. Uh, Gary, these are seeing uh, just going by part. 
Gary, Gary De Sarcina with the infielders, he's been taking them out. Uh, even on days that we haven't taken BP, they've been out there. They've been doing their routines. They've been very disciplined with it. Uh, I think that preparation has led for them to, uh, uh, you know, be better each day out there for the pitchers. I mean, our guys are throwing really well. They're throwing strikes. There's a lot of balls put in play. Uh, and, you know, those guys are just being responsible about it. You know, they want to be there for the pitchers. And our outfielders is the same. Tony, they're throwing to the bases. They're they're doing live reads. They're doing different stuff. All those things that that they're going to they're gonna find in the game. So I think the preparation that they've done, along with their abilities, I mean, you can't leave that a uh, on the side, but their preparation to go in there and play the way they've been playing is what is what's uh, what's been the key. Um, <clears throat> and with, with our catchers, just the game calling, the pairing with the pitchers, I mean, all that has been working really well, uh, just because of uh, the the consistency on doing it on a daily basis. Not because things are going really well or things are they're really working. They're always paying attention and and they're looking at opportunities of getting better. I know you said last start after last after Walker's last start that that he's exceeded your expectations so far this season. Now, as a guy that that when he came up was really a uh, fireballer and and didn't have too many other pitches. Just I guess what is the the maturity that you see in him as the pitcher that he's become now to allow the ball to get put in play and and get himself deep into games. Yeah, you, you, I mean you said it. I think he's. Uh... Uh, become more of a pitcher. I mean, uh, just by the usage of the different pitches that he's been uh, working on and getting better uh, to use them in different counts. So the usage, the usage of his uh, splitter in different counts, the usage of his slider, now being able to locate the fastball whether it's up or to run it, run it in sometimes to righty like he does, or do a front hip to a lefty. He did all that today. So he's got weapons. Um, and uh, the command right now, I think it's really good. So those two things are, are helping. Uh, the below is a tick up compared to uh, last year or, you know, a few a uh, couple of uh, years uh, back. And uh, all, all that, I mean, you can throw it in the mix and everything is, is what making him play the way he's playing right now. Thanks. Your next question is from Enrique Rojas. Luis, todos sabemos que lo más importante en esta dinámica de competencia es el standing, los ganados y perdidos. Sin embargo, en esta racha y con el triunfo de hoy, el equipo acaba de ponerse en el lado positivo en las carreras anotadas y permitidas. ¿Qué tan importante es ese número para ustedes? Bueno, el, Enrique, saludo primeramente. Eh, el diferencial de carreras para... Te lo digo, para mí no es importante, eh, para mí son importantes la ganada y la perdida. Eh, nosotros nos preparamos todos los días para ganar partidos, sabemos que eso es algo que no va a pasar, eh, no vamos a ganar todos los juegos en realidad, pero nosotros nos preparamos para ganar y eso es lo que nos importa. Eh, sí, este es quizá el primer partido que nosotros separamos, así desde temprano, vamos a, vamos a decir, Juan Lando siempre respeto al equipo contrario, eh, cuando, como está el score, pero que separamos para para quizás eh, utilizar diferentes piezas en el bullpen, como es el caso de eh, Drew Smith, que no había hecho ninguna apariencia en la temporada y vino y pudo, pudo lanzar esa, esa última entrada ahí con eh, a tres bateadores, tres out. Así que <coughs> eso es muy bueno que los muchachos estén jugando como están jugando. Todo el mundo ahora mismo eh, se está preparando para jugar su mejor juego en todas las áreas, en el bateo, que ha estado muy bien últimamente, en la defensa, que ha estado bastante bien. Hoy enseñamos una muy buena defensa para mantener a Walker en un, en un conteo de picheo bajito y que nos diera las siete entradas que nos dio. Eh, y el picheo, nuevamente. O sea, todos los abridores, los relevistas, eh, los relevistas que han venido en diferentes situaciones. Nosotros hemos tenido desde opener hasta gente... Eh, pidiéndole entrada extra, multi, multi, eh, multi entrada por apariencia, eh, sabiendo que a veces hemos estado cortos. Así que todo lo que se ha hecho en todas las áreas en la última semana, de verdad, yo le quiero dar crédito al equipo completo porque todo el mundo ha participado en esta racha que estamos llevando. Ya no podemos desconectar de eso. Sí tenemos un día libre eh, muy bueno para, para nosotros porque tenemos algunos muchachos que se han dado unos golpes en los últimos días. Pero el viernes eh, nos enfocamos en ese partido. Eh, que, eh, así que nosotros estamos trabajando en el día a día, esa preparación que los muchachos están haciendo para, para el partido de día. O sea, que nuestro enfoque va a ser el equipo de, de Tampa, que es para allá que nos dirigimos esta tarde. Your next question comes from Rich Catino. Louis, um, teams that have playoff aspirations have to take control on their home field. You're 11 and 4 here this year. You have already three series sweeps. What do you think makes you such a difficult team to play here at City Field? 
Well, I mean, uh, I mean, this is our home. We we know this field. We know how he how he plays. And even though we have guys guys that uh, uh, were acquired this off season and and uh, they saw City Field for the first time uh, when we came in um, uh, after that uh, road trip to Philly, uh, the series in Philly. The, the guys I think are getting more acclimated each time they play here. Um, they they feel like home. They feel they feel backed up by the by the fans. Uh, the fans get into it. I think they they give good energy to the guys, and you know the guys go out there and they give their their best. I mean, you saw you saw the guys you know playing in the two series that we just finished, and um, they were they were energetic. They were playing at one speed. I mean, they were they were always on their toes. I mean, everyone. Uh, the pitchers came in ready to do a job, uh, you know, from from a starter role to to a reliever role, and then everyone that got a chance to play did something, you know, uh, really good for us to win a, to win a game. And Jose Peraza was included to to the game yesterday, and immediately he responded with a knock, and then today he starts and he gets and he goes two for four and plays outstanding at second. So, I think the guys are feeling very ener energetic by the atmosphere here at home and also by the fan base. Uh, we're going on a road trip. And we're going to three different places, so we got to carry that over to that as well. Um, I know, I know the guys. You know the way they they work on it. I think we can translate that into the road as well. Your next question comes from Dionisio Salvadora. Luis, son siete victorias en forma consecutiva las que tienen ahora los Mets de Nueva York y el panorama luce bastante diferente a hace unos diez días cuando. Eh, la tensión se sentía en el equipo, incluyendo lo que resultó en el despido de un par de coaches. ¿Qué cambió en los Mets y cómo se sienten las cosas eh, ahora en primer lugar y con una racha ya de siete partidos? Eh, bueno, Dionisio, eh, eh, primero que todo lo que, lo que ha cambiado es el bateo. Eh, nosotros no estábamos bateando. Eh, ahora mismo los muchachos están cogiendo más turnos de calidad. Creo que estamos eh, conectando eh, muchos turnos buenos en secuencia, ya sea con una base por bola, ya sea con un batazo impulsador. Eh, de diferentes formas eh, eh, estamos buscando la manera ya de anotar. Eso era algo que no estábamos haciendo. Nuestro picheo, nuestra defensa, eh, pienso que han estado eh, más consistentes que el bateo durante la temporada, pero en esta racha en la que estamos positiva, eh, el bateo se ha incluido. Eh, para ya anotar la carrera que necesita ese pitcher, esa defensa para ganar el juego. Así que eh, sí nos sentimos bastante bien con lo que estamos haciendo, eh, pero no, no vamos a decir que estamos cómodos, eh, especialmente porque tenemos algunas lesiones en el equipo y queremos que esa, esos muchachos se recuperen. Eh, el día de mañana ayuda bastante eh, para, para esas cosas, eh, como es el caso de Jeff McNeil, que salió del juego eh, ayer y estaba, tenía el cuerpo acalambrado, lo hidratamos bastante hoy, él estaba para el juego, estaba... Eh, disponible, pero no tuvimos que utilizarlo. Eh, pero el día de mañana ayuda bastante y como te digo, no estamos cómodos. Nosotros vamos a seguir trabajando de la misma manera y vamos a seguir con esa con ese approach del día a día. O sea, ya tenemos el viernes a un equipo muy bueno como lo es el de Tampa, que siempre es competitivo, juega un, un béisbol muy agresivo y, y esa preparación para ese día es lo que lo que ahora mismo a nosotros nos importa más. Mike Fuma, you're next. Hey Louis, what, what what's been uh, the difference in Dom's at bats lately? Well, I, I think he's sitting more on his backside uh, when he's uh, when he's loading and when he's separa uh, separating. Uh, that's giving him more of a chance to recognize pitches. Uh, I think he did get uh, full ones uh, uh, today, but he was he was able to make the adjustment pitch to pitch. And uh, I mean, you are going to get full. You are because you're going to look for something. I mean, you're facing big league pitchers, and and you know the stuff is good. And they're going to fool you. You're going to be looking hard. They're going to throw you soft. It's going to look like hard at times. But when you see it and you have it in your memory bank, you're going to be able. If you do that sitting back, you're going to be able to lay off. So I think he was able to do that today, uh, and uh, and get his pitches to hit. He did it last night. Uh, you know that wasn't an easy at bat. Him coming in uh, to face Valdez uh, in the uh, in the ninth and. Uh, He's been having trouble with the soft stuff, and and he came through. So he translated that into today again, and he was pretty consistent, staying back and recognizing pitches, laying off, and getting better pitches to it. And uh, I mean, he's hit what so well with runners in scoring position. Is is that a mental approach for them? Yeah, you know, he was different this year. For for me, uh, at one point, he was just uh, struggling a little bit because of what I just described in his approach, but. We we know his his ability to driving runs. I mean, he led the team in in RBIs last year in the short season, 
So he is going to give you a quality of bat in, the, in that situation. He just needed to find himself uh, with his mechanics, with his approach, you know, so he could stay back longer, recognize pitches. Thanks. Tom Miriam, your line is open. Louis, how important was it to complete this home stand with a sweep, particularly with a tough road trip coming up? Well, yeah, every game is important. Uh, you know, we I, I think everyone in there, you know, takes takes that, uh, you know, very serious. You know, just not not seeing uh, just only the homestand as a whole. I mean, now we can look back and we feel that, you know, we won every game here at home, which is, you know, is great. And we felt the fans uh, energy, everything. But we, we go after after every game the same way. Um, it is important, uh, I can say, you know, because you uh, you you carry you're carrying some confidence. You know, there's guys that are coming into play that weren't playing on a regular basis, and when they see that they're included uh, to uh, to the starting lineup and they're part of the, the winning formula, that that just brings every everyone into the same level of confidence. So that's that's the one part that I see is really important. You know, since you know we're gonna go now on the road and we want to be playing like we're playing at home on the road. So. Guys like Perasa, like I described earlier, that he, he joined the game last night in the middle of it, and then got the start today, and he responded immediately in the same way that Pilar's done it, same way that Villar has done it. Like those guys see that they're part of the winning formula, even though we have some guys down and on the, on the IL, um, that just lifts the confidence uh, overall on the team. So that's why it's really important, and uh, it's definitely going to help us to face a team like the race, you know, since we're going there and playing there, playing them on Friday. So. Uh, excited, excited with the way the guys are, are playing ball right now. Every single one of them. Everyone's uh, really working hard to uh, to get things done uh, this way. Luis, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Zach. See you guys.
Kevin, thank you very much for taking the time. Members of the media, if you'd like to ask a question, please use the raise your hand feature located underneath the reactions tab. Your first question today comes from Mike Puma. Hey, Kevin. Just, what, what do you make of the way, uh, you, you know, you've been filling in, you've had, you've had VR filling in. I mean, just the way guys have stepped up off the bench here. Yeah, I mean, I think uh... – I think initially you get to a point in your career, you still feel like you could be an everyday player. Um, you know, I think I can speak for myself. I got to imagine VR came here because you wanted a chance to win. And sometimes you got to sacrifice, uh, you know, the opportunity to go out there and play every day to try to win. Uh, Mets was a team that uh, had a lot of excitement around them. Felt like they're a team ready to win now. The last couple of years I was in places where I was playing every day and, really wasn't competing for a whole lot except playing for myself. So coming here, I knew I still had a, a lot to give and I knew I could play every single day, but, um, you know, wanted to really want an opportunity to come and win. So for me, it was just keeping that same mindset like I would when I was playing every day. Uh, when I wasn't playing, I was finding ways to try to contribute on the bench, watching video, helping guys get ready to prepare for pitchers, trying to be a good teammate and, um, you know, it was difficult at first, but I stayed ready. You know, I waited for my opportunity. You never want to see it come through injury, but uh, it's part of the game. And I just felt like if I get that opportunity, I'd go out there and, and prove I could play every single day. And also, you know, coming here, we, I remember when you got here, we asked you a lot about, you know, you're playing center field and, and why maybe it seemed like the drop off. I mean, this year you, you, you've looked good out there. I mean, any explanation why kind of things, have, you know, there was that kind of seesaw? No, I mean, I think early on, too, you know, when I was getting a chance to play kind of seldomly, uh, you know, proving that you're a good defensive center fielder or a good defensive outfielder also comes with opportunity to go out there and make plays. And, you know, there had been some games where, you know, I'm out there and I don't really see a whole lot of action. I think just over the last couple of days, being out there every single day, the opportunities presented itself for me to go out there and, you know, showcase that I could still play defense at a high level. And um, it's just something I continue to work at in the off season, something I continue to work out through spring training and try to get out there every single day. And, you know, now, you know, having to kind of bounce around between center and left and sometimes right, just preparing myself every single day for those opportunities. Thank you. Next question comes from Mike Mancuso. Kevin, can you speak of the offense, the way you're putting together rallies and scoring runs without hitting home runs? Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we've talked about the home run thing here. I think we, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's some external factors why balls aren't leaving this yard. We're not really going to get into that. But I think we just, uh, you know, collectively, I think we go into our hitters meetings and we, we have good – plans of attacks. I think we, you know, try to be aggressive in certain parts of the zone and, and try to hunt damage. And I think we've done a really good job of, uh, you know, figuring out certain areas where pitchers are going to try to get us out where there's not a lot of damage. And I think that's led to longer at bats, more guys getting on, taking their walks. And I think, uh, you know, things have just started to click a little bit more offensively. I think, you know, you see, you get some results. I think guys are starting to get a little bit more confident. Um, you know, and even dating back early in the year, I think we did a really good job of getting, you know, runners on base. We just weren't able to come up with a big hit. And I think sometimes you just got to see some balls drop for you to start to individually uh, start to build a little confidence. And, you know, when you see a teammate do it, it gives you a little bit more confidence when you come up. And we just believe if we, you know, keep getting guys on bases, we're, we're, we're going to come up with opportunities to, to come up with big hits. And you saw that today. Anthony Como, you're up next. Hey Kevin. hey, Kevin. Nito mentioned the other day that you you and him kind of came up with the bench mob thing. And I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, why it was important for you to kind of build that sort of culture type thing when obviously, as, as you said, you still believe you have the skill set to be an everyday player and to be that guy. Yeah, I mean, I think it I think it dated back to even, you know, middle towards the end of spring training when you kind of see how the, the roster is shaping up, who's going to be on the team, who's going to kind of be everyday players and – I think for us, it was just important to kind of identify ourselves as guys that are going to come off the bench and try to make a difference, whether it was coming in to play defense, whether it was pinch running, getting an opportunity to pinch it, or 
when we got our opportunities to start. And I think all of us just kind of bought into the mentality that, you know, we got to stay ready and, 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 you know, wait for the opportunity to present itself. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, unfortunately it came through some injuries, but, you know, with injuries gives opportunity to guys to, to step up. And, you know, I imagine when these guys get healthy, things kind of return to normal, but getting the opportunity to go out there and play, you know, five, six, 10 days in a row is, you know, only allow going you know, to allow myself to be more confident when my name's called. Same for JV, same for Nito, same for all these guys coming off the bench. You saw Jose kind of step up yesterday, being thrown in the game, getting to start today, coming out with big hits. I think it's just, I think it's just something for us to kind of rally around and and uh, you know remind ourselves that you know we are an important part of this team. You know, we're not starting and just you know holding each other accountable to to stay ready when the opportunity presents itself. Thank you. Your next question comes from DJ Thozar. Hey, Kevin, uh, you kind of just touched on it, but with Nimmo expected to return this weekend, have you thought about how your playing time may decrease and how to still remain effective off the bench, even though you may not be playing every day? Yeah, I, I think I think for me, the biggest thing, uh, getting a chance to play every day was just kind of getting back into a rhythm of not having to, you know, try to make something happen right now. I was able to kind of game plan and figure out you know, how to kind of dissect pitchers. I think moving forward, if I'm not starting and I see guys in the bullpen, I'm going to kind of figure out a better way to game plan, not feeling like I need to go out there and do something right away to kind of impact the game. Um, I think hits over this, this stretch has come from me, you know, kind of just settling in and, and feeling like I could just give the team a good at bad. And if I get a good result, it's good. I feel like sometimes you're in this pitch hitting mode. You feel like it's so black and white. Like I either get a hit or I don't get a hit. I think just buying into the mindset, if I give the team a good at bat, um, you know, that's all I can do. We can't control wh where the ball goes, where it lands, if you get a hit or not. So, you know, and I'm also a big believer in, uh, you know, guys really not, uh, you know, losing their, you know, position due to injury. Injuries are part of this game. I expect him to come back and, you know, get the majority of the reps. But I feel like, um, you know, in some way it's easier for Louie to put me in the lineup, you know, to, to justify to the fans, to the media, to whoever that why is he playing instead of him? You know, I've shown that I could go out there and play every single day. And, you know, when the opportunity presents itself, I'll stay ready. Thanks. Tim Britton, your line is open. Hey, Kevin, uh, I'm wondering this this far into the season now in the, the batter's box and in the outfield, have you noticed and maybe started adapting to the ball not flying the same way as in the past with the changes they made to the baseball? Yeah, I mean, both sides of the ball. It's um, it's something, especially here at home, you know, we, we've, I think over the this homestand, I think we've taken a little bit more notice to, uh, you know, obviously we haven't had great weather yet. It hasn't really warmed up. Today was kind of the first warm day we played. Um, yeah, offensively, we feel like we've hit some balls really good. And, you know, I think guys now are a little bit more in tune with, with the analytics and know, you know, exit velocities and, and launch angles and, you know, how far the ball should go. And I feel like we've hit balls better than, uh, you know, the kind of the results have shown, um, defensively too. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a little bit challenging. I think, you know, over the course of the game, you play your normal depth and you feel like you're coming in constantly, constantly, and then someone, you know, burns you deep. Um, I think it's just an adjustment to, uh, you know, situation of the game. But, yeah, the ball's definitely not carrying like it used to, and it's it's an adjustment I think we've had to make, especially here at home. Thank you. Kevin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Members of media, this concludes today's post-game media session. We're going to close the City Field Press Box at 5 p.m. Thank you. Stay safe. And good night.